I do not know why in the world I stored all this stuff so terribly. I have all my sheets in the back that I need to get, and it is all behind all of my long legs of steel. So this could be interesting. Of course, I need the furthest one in the back. Okay, so I have my drawing onto my material. Uh, they gave me somewhat of an ish drawing. The only measurement I didn't have was this one. So I guessed on it and it didn't look right. So I just altered it a little bit so it looked a little more like the picture. But I'm going to cut up this piece. I don't have to do. I'll do one side at a time. And then once I have this one piece cut, I'm going to flip it over onto this side so I can cut my second piece so they can be exactly the same. Because then there's going to be a six inch flat bar in between everything. Uh, so then you can be able to fill it with weights uh, for people to be able to lift it. Uh, so today, you guys, I'm sporting these bad boys. I quite like them. They're very dark, almost too dark. But I will line up my... Yeah, I'm using a straight edge, you guys. Today's the day. Sometimes it's just easy. I'm definitely wearing safety gear that I find necessary for myself. You find that you need more safety gear for using plasma cutter, then feel free to put on a shirt proper gloves. I have my earplugs in, protecting my eyes. Uh, so I'm doing what I find necessary, so you do what you find necessary for yourself. Okay.
uh, straight edge on the piece that doesn't move because otherwise you're going to have a little bit of a wow in your cut. So make sure you pay attention to those little things. actually my favorite discs for cleaning up after plasma cutting. Uh, these are just some sanding discs with a backing plate on my grinder. I buy the 35 grit ones. They actually work better than a flapper disc, better than a grinding disc, and they're far cheaper than either of those things. And I like it because when you push flat along, it just moves back and forth. It'll get rid of any of the ridges or any of the bumps and just make everything absolutely even. And then when you angle it a bit back, a bit down, to where the little layer of slag is on there, it just takes it off so nicely. So these are my favorite ones for after plasma cutting. Okay, so I got this one cut, and now I did this in a way hoping that I would have enough room to get both of these. Cut. I like to make the most of the material that I have. So if I were to put this any other way, I think it would take up a lot more space. But if I, you know, if I could get it that way, even this way, because then you're getting all these little angled pieces and it takes away from that. So if we utilize this one long line, that's one less long line that I need to plasma cut as well. So all the rest will just be the short lines. So I'm gonna use that line that. Shut that on the table a bit better. So that will be a nice straight line. And then I will draw the rest of my lines with the trusty old soap stone. I like to use soapstone because it doesn't burn off with the plasma cutter. Sometimes when you use the Sharpie, it'll burn off before you can see your line. Not that it's a big deal in this case because I'm using my straight edge, but I do like to see my line when I'm cutting everything. Hey. And when I do cut this, I will probably cut it just along here just so this breaks off into two separate pieces. So it's not one big odd shaped piece. Let's get cutting. So now I have both these pieces cut. They're pretty rusty, but that's okay. I'm not spending too much time cleaning it up. Uh, I have to get these done in a hurry. So, 
what I'm going to do. I'm going to take both pieces, put them on top of one another, clamp them together, and then clean them up, smooth them up on all the sides to make sure that this is exactly the same for both pieces. good at what I do. They should be pretty much bang on. Ooh, baby. I like it. I like it. I'll do three sides at a time. I don't know how I got so lucky today. This never happens. So let's see if I have. Oh, my poor day. This is exactly the amount that I need. And I can use my fancy dance little bandsaw for this. So let's pick the better end. Neither. So I'm going to cut flat bar with my fan top to see what it looks like. This thing has been a bit of a game changer for me. Having this on drop sites to use instead of zip cuts, it's the cat's meow. Okay, how do I want to do this here? beautiful hands. I think I'm far past that. Okay, so now we will put these things together. And so because this is the way that I ground them, so this is the way that they match. They should match you know, both ways. The same thing, but I'm going to flip this over. This way. I will just get pretty much everything tacked into place. I will just that there with some magnetic squares, put the other pieces on, put this on top. It's a beautiful day. So 
So I'm doing this, I mean this is only one eighth material, but I'm putting it just halfway on the outside so that when I run a bead along it, I'll have a, like a little bit of a V, a little bit of a groove to weld it so I'm not just welding on top of two butt together pieces. weight as these guys can carry. Uh, there's only one last thing that I need to do. 